Don't cross the boss. Keep this not safe for work video where it belongs. At home. Viewer discretion is advised. It's that time, once again, where we let things run wild and go full on TVMA. It's time, brother, for Hulk Hogan's Manga Mania 4. Back in Japan during the Hulkster's first WWE title run, a series of short weekly comics called Yappa, a Hogan Yo, were printed in the pages of Bon Bon magazine. Hogan did often perform in Japan, both in and out of the WWE, where he was known as the Ichiban was quite popular, and showed off a slightly different set of moves than we're used to. The comics are rude, vulgar, and hilarious. We wouldn't have it any other way. Since this is the fourth installment, I don't want to take too much time repeating what many already know, but for a more detailed description, take a look at the other three videos for the complete backstory. Now, let's get right to the action. One day in the training room, Hogan finds himself being laughed at and mocked by the other superstars in the gym. Why? Because Hogan got lazy and let his body go. I mean, look at him! The pythons are no longer 24 inches, and the pectorals, well, they no longer go baumbi baumbi. You know when you laugh, your little things there go baumbi 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 His chest is only a meager 32 inches, not good at all. Hogan vows to get back into shape. He begins a strict routine of push-ups, sit-ups, free weights, and gymnastics to hulk up again. Believe it or not, it only took one day to get back into shape. He pulled an all-nighter. The other guys from the gym come back to see Hogan's progress. Sure enough, he did the job, bringing his chest from 32 inches up to 70. As a world-renowned pro wrestling champion, Hogan often speaks at public events. Today, he is at an elementary school to hold an assembly for all his little Hulkamaniacs. As the principal makes an introduction, Hogan finds a strange-looking whistle on the ground. He gives it a blow, and the sound makes everyone grow a little itchy bond of their own. It only works on guys, though. Don't forget. With the power of this whistle, Hogan can make all sorts of trouble. He goes downtown, to a funeral, and to the park to wreak some havoc. Then he sees Ricky on a date. He's trying to score. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to prank his old buddy. He blows the whistle and, whoa, what? Ricky's date has a bigger itchy bond than him. Whatever's going on, I don't want to know. Hogan and some of the other superstars are on a day trip to a hot spring. Things get a little rowdy as expected. Naturally, Hogan is the loudest and most annoying of the bunch. He's drunk, butt ass naked, and his karaoke singing sounds like a runaway groundhog caught in a deep fryer. Andre tries to knock some sense into him, but Hogan begs to be put down, saying he doesn't feel so well. It's probably from all the drinking and the motion of the bus. The tour guide offers him a barf bucket, but all Hogan can do is drop a number two. For Andre, it's not good enough. He demands Hogan yak up all the booze he had on the bus so that they can all go to the hot spring peacefully. Andre whips up a super spicy curry and the others add their own special ingredients, then force Hogan to open wide. The bus pulls into the hot spring and from outside, the bus windows shatter as Hogan rides the wave to safety. Kerry Von Erich, at least I think it's him, is shocked to find one of his recent photos seems to have a ghost in it. 
The other guys all agree. How could this happen? Was it really a ghost? Just then, the ghost appears in person. It's actually connected to Hogan's you-know-what. It's haunted! Brody takes action and cuts his thingy clean off. Hogan runs around bleeding everywhere like a lawn sprinkler. The Road Warriors tell Brody that Hogan is going to bleed to death if they don't get him to a hospital stat. Brody says that's fine by him. They go back and forth about what to do, but something seems off. How can the Road Warriors be in front of and behind Brody? It turns out that Hogan's you-know-what is also a Hydra. If you cut off one head, then three will take its place. Andre and the Road Warriors go to Hogan's new house. He just bought it this week. It must be one of those new prefab kind of things. The house really has a certain motif to it, don't you think? The sofa, the TV, the coffee tables, the fridge, even the tea set all look like Mr. Happy. Andre and Hawk can't even bring themselves to drink from the cup. You don't need to guess why. Hogan asks his friends, why don't they get a house just like this? They stammer and give a half answer that, you know, they just can't afford it. Hogan says that's not a problem, and he shows them his printing press, giving each of them a freshly minted billion yen. Andre asks Hogan where he got this money maker. After all, you just can't own one, you know. Hogan says it was easy. The house was built right next to the National Mint, so one day he just took it. Let's take a quick time out. When we come back, Stan Hansen will be in action. Hey, how can I get muscles like you guys? Wow, Mr. Wonderful! You can start by getting in shape with the Hawkamania workout set. Right! This got everything you need. Head and wristband. A jump rope for warming up. A hand gripper for power. Dumbbells for strength. An exercise poster. And even Hawk's own workout tape. The Hawkamania workout set. You, from LJN. Are you in shape yet? Yeah! Oh! Don't miss The Butt Detective, now playing on GTV. Tonight's main event is a special tag team match. In one corner, the team of Wajima and Hogan. And in the other corner, Ricky and Stan Hansen. The Bombers versus the Lariats. The match begins. Hogan and Wajima argue over what move to use first. Launch a hot number two or attack with a shovel. They can't get their act together and begin to seriously argue while Ricky and Stan look on laughing at them. The argument escalates to a fight as Wajima and Hogan start punching each other. There's never been a DQ for attacking your own partner, but they're handing the W over to Stan and Ricky by this point. The fight gets so heated that Hogan starts to hulk up and tells everyone to behold his new fighting technique as Hogan turns into a giant octopus and inks Wajima, Stan, and Ricky. He takes all three of them down with a clothesline then literally wipes the mat with them. On an off day, the guys like to get together and hang out. Tonight, they decide to have a sukiyaki party, where everyone gets together, brings one food item, cooks it all together, shares with each other, and eats it. But these are some pretty big dudes, so Hogan says whoever joins in better bring a lot. 
Everyone delivers with huge amounts of meat and vegetables. But now, there's just one problem. There's so much food, there's no fire big enough to cook it at all. They need more gas to fuel the fire. Hogan says, not a problem. He's got this one covered. Hogan and Murdoch face off in the squared circle. The match is pretty good and the crowd is into it, but the announcer is really into it, calling every match at the top of his lungs. Every move is better than the last. Eventually, the sound of the announcer, which is louder than anything, draws Hogan's attention away from the match. The announcer sticks to kayfabe and tells everyone through the mic how Hogan is all up in his face, sweaty bald head and all. Hogan, of course, hates that. He tells the announcer if he really wants to see some action, then get the mic and call this. Hogan pulls out the family computer and starts playing Gradius in the ring, while the announcer dutifully puts Hogan over. Hogan takes a trip up north, away from the city lights of Tokyo, to the wide open countryside of Hokkaido. Japan's northernmost prefecture. Up there, everything is bigger. The mountains, the sky, even the snow. And there's cows. You don't see that in Tokyo. Hogan is so excited to see a cow in person, he takes a drink right from the source. The hot springs are nice, especially in the winter. But watch out for bears. Of course, pro wrestling is popular up there too. Hogan headlines a live show in an open arena right in the middle of the Sapporo Winter Ice Garden. The matches are great. It's SummerSlam level in-ring action, only in the dead of winter. Everything is great until a bear, a real bear, shows up and starts wrecking the place. He attacks Hogan, rips off his clothes and his hair, and takes a few bites off of him as well, chasing him not just out of the ring, but out of town, down a mountain, and, well, where is Hogan? He's safe and alive, but he's lost on an iceberg, floating somewhere out on the sea of Ohotsk. At the gym, after a hard day of training, everyone sits down in the sauna for a relaxing steam. It's hot, and after a long steam, nothing beats eating something cold, which it appears Hogan is already doing. Inoki asks Hogan what he's eating, and if he might share some of it as well. He's eating udon, long noodles, a lot longer than usual. And Hogan says, sure, he brought enough noodles for everybody. So take some and eat up. Inoki decides that he's actually not that hungry. At another table, there's a big bowl of ice cream for everyone. Of course, Hogan takes the most. And why not? He's the one who filled up the bowl in the first place. That's all for this year's installment. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next year for Hulk Hogan's Manga Mania 5.